the phases of the moon. So why do we see the phases of the moon? So in the picture we saw at the beginning of class, we know that half of the moon is always lit, just like the Earth, which makes day and night, which I believe. So we can see half of it's always lit. And we see phases of the moon because uh, half of the moon's lit, the Earth is going around, the, earth, the moon is revolving around the Earth. And so how much we see changes. If the moon is in this position here, here we are, we see a full moon. So to us, it appears like this. And then the new moon is when you can't see anything, and it appears like this. And so just like with seasons, the easiest thing to do is to find the sun, identify the new moon and the full moon, and then the rest of the seasons from there. We'll come back to that picture in a minute. So we see phases of the moon because of the angle um, that we look at the moon. And we are able to see how much is lit. And the amount that we are able to see lit changes throughout the month. And again, as we heard yesterday, month actually comes from the word moon. A month is 28 or 30 or 31 days. It takes the moon roughly 28 days to go through its cycle. 27 and a half or 29, depending on how you're counting it. Yes. Yes. So if you look at the months, October, oct sounds like eight, which means it, see, and so and then November, nine, December, 10, right? Sept is seven, which is September. So that seems kind of messed up. And basically it's because we took one calendar and then originally people used different calendars. And so now that worldwide we use roughly the same calendar, when it all got standardized, it, it, but yeah, it did kind of get messed up. Yeah, the, the other thing too is as you know, the Julian calendar, yeah, I don't know a lot about it, but that's exactly what it is, is also in the past before they realized that um, before you put a leap day in the calendar, right, every four years because it's 365 and one quarter days to go around, then one day every four years, the, the calendar starts shifting. So yeah, that, that's why it's, it's kind of a bunch of different calendars put together for the standard calendar we all use. And I'm sure you could look that up and find a little more detail, but that's exactly right. Okay, so back to the moon here. Um, we Waxing and waning. When we describe what the moon looks like, we talk about it as either waxing or waning. All of these words you will need to know for the quiz on Friday, so make sure Make sure if the phases of the moon are waxing, if the moon is waxing, what does that mean? The part that is lit is getting bigger. And so then waning means the part we see is getting smaller. So waxing is going to be like this from the new moon. And then we'll talk. So these are the phases. Most of the phases are very descriptive and easy to remember. Right? So this is the new moon where you see nothing. The, here it's waxing. What we see is getting bigger. And this shape of the moon is called what? A crescent. That's pretty easy. We probably all call that the crescent moon. And we actually are calling this the waxing crescent because it's getting bigger. Now this, when we see half of the moon, we actually call it the first quarter because we're a quarter of the way through the moon cycle. It's a little bit confusing, but it is called the first quarter, or you could call it a quarter moon. And then if you've got a little bit more than half, this is the one that people generally are not familiar with because we don't usually use this word. This is called a gibbous moon. I don't know where that word comes from, but this is the gibbous moon. And this is, of course, the waxing gibbous, meaning it's approaching full. Then the waning phases, then you get, of course, to the full moon. So here's the full moon. And after you have the full moon, 
it's going to start getting smaller. The part you see lit is going to start getting smaller. Your attention is waning. Your attention is fading. Your attention is going away. So this would be the waning what? Gibbous. And then we've got a half moon again. And since we're three quarters of the way through the moon cycle, this is called the third quarter. And then you have a waning crescent. So you need to be able to um, identify each one of these stages. Um, the waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, gibbous, and third quarter. So again, pretty logical. If you think about it, we, we took those moon phase cards yesterday and put them in order. The moon's not going to go from new to full. It's not going to go from a crescent to full. So just as you put them in sequence around the moon, around the earth, just make sure logically that it makes sense. All right, let's see what is next. So here's our faces again that we just looked at. Uh, this is just another diagram. Again, uh, it's kind of interesting. So half of the moon is always lit. And you've heard of the dark side of the moon. Well, different sides of the moon are dark, right? Sometimes we see this side. This is, uh, we've got the American flag here. Notice how here the American flag's in the dark, here it's right on the edge, and here it's in the light. The way the moon rotates on its axis as it revolves around, there's kind of something kind of strange. What happens is we always see the same side of the moon. So when you look at the moon, um, there's like a big crater in the lower part that you can see. And certain, they're called Maria, which means oceans, which of course they're not oceans, but they were named by the first people looking at the moon. When you look at the moon, the surface features always look the same because you are always looking at that same side. So this side of the moon back here, which is here, which is here, it is lit sometimes, but we cannot ever actually see it because it's always away from us just because the way it is orbiting. Questions? When we have a full moon, um, it looks bigger, and oftentimes it looks orange, uh, different colors. We saw that a couple nights ago this past weekend. We had a full moon. <coughs> That's just because of as it rises, it's coming through the atmosphere. So just like sunrise and sunset, the, um, the sky looks very orange because the moisture and the pollution in the sky are scattering the light rays, so you see more reds. So the whole thing about the full moon, remember the full moon rises right as the sun sets. So it's coming up, right, and the sun's shining on it, but it's coming up through the atmosphere right there. And so it looks very big. And um, the light is scattered, which makes it look red. Okay? Um, and then the harvest moon, again, much like we talked about with seasons, in the past, the harvest moon is, is like the first full moon in, I don't remember, August or September because it's so bright and um, it, again we saw with the full moon there's it's actually so light at night that people could actually harvest their crops and so there's actually names for every single for almost every one of the moons there's the harvest moon and uh, I have to look it up um, but it's just names for the different full moons as people use the moonlight to do things um, let's look at our next picture we're going to come back to this other picture in a minute here uh, so again, this is a picture you may see on a quiz. If I gave you a picture like this, can you draw the phases of the moon? First of all, where should the sun be in this picture? On the right? Okay, so we can see here that this side, and we should actually make nighttime on the earth as well, The right side of everything is dark, so where's the sun? And this actually says sun's rays, which you can't read. So the sun's actually going to be over here because this side of things is light, right? Oh, yeah. And I'm not going to do this for you right now. What's that? 
the circles outside are for you to show what you see. So if you are here on the Earth, that's you. Uh, let's start with number one. What phase of the moon do you see? You would see it all black, which is the new moon. So here, you're just going to color in what you see. And then what are you going to see here? Half a moon. And what are you going to see here? The full moon. So I'll give you a copy of something like this tomorrow. And this, so if you draw a line through this, you can kind of see what you're going to see. Here you're going to see just a crescent, right? Here you're going to see half. Here you're going to see more than half. And so it's just a matter of doing that. But again, logically, if you take a look, you can see, and the numbers go this way, you can see that if it's totally dark here, you're going to see a little bit of light, half, mostly light, full. Um, like that. So, again, we will come back to that. Uh, are we ready to go on to eclipses? So, an eclipse is when eclipse means to shadow over or to block out. If the moon, if we went back to this picture, if the moon was directly around kind of Earth's equator, we would get an eclipse every full moon and every new moon. But the moon is actually tilted on this axis, so we don't get eclipses every month. So here's the two types of eclipses, and the name tells you exactly what's happening. A solar eclipse means the sun is being blocked. The sun is being eclipsed. So um, a solar eclipse is the more rare. It's seen only by a small portion of people on Earth. And what's happening, you think about it, uh, there was one last year. So if you look at this, where does the, what phase of the moon does it have to be to block the sun? Well, no, because the full moon's a, the full moon's over here and the sun's over here. It has to be a new moon, right? Because that's when the earth, uh, the moon, is between the earth and the sun. So a solar eclipse will only happen with a new moon, right? Which makes sense because you can't see it and it blocks it. Um, and because of kind of the angles here, what happens is it's only seen on a small portion. And yeah, we've actually had a couple of these over the past uh, four or five years. And um, actually, we did, we had one, when was it? Was that uh, the beginning of the school year or end of the school year? It was last spring. And that was actually really rare. It was a nearly, it was nearly total eclipse that we could see um, last year in April or May. And um, how many people got to see that? And it happened kind of right at sunset for us. And, there, you know, and then it got cloudy. And the other thing, too, it wasn't 100% um, full. It wasn't total eclipse. And I know a lot of people were like, why didn't it get totally dark? It only gets very dark just in one place. And for us, it was happening at sunset, which made it even more difficult. Uh, but it was kind of, uh, it was interesting. And if you had those solar glasses to look at it, the very, very dark glasses, you could actually see it, the eclipse glasses. Could you follow it? I don't know if you could go, I don't know how fast you'd have to go. Right. Well, and some people do, right? Some people travel to wherever the eclipse is going to be, but could you follow it around the globe? I don't think you could go quite fast. It's not worth it. Okay. So lunar eclipse, we don't have too much time left. Let's wrap this up. A lunar eclipse is when the, when the moon, Luna, is blocked by the sunlight. The Earth blocks the sun from hitting the full moon. So again, if you look at this picture, so if you look at this picture, if the full moon is going to be blocked, if the moon is going to be blocked, it has to be here. Um, so the full moon... And then what's happening is the Earth, it's going into the Earth's shadow. How many people have seen a lunar eclipse? 
These happen a lot more often. And when there's a lunar eclipse, everybody on Earth sees it. Unless it happens in what's essentially the day to you. So these ones are easier to see and more common. So make sure you know the difference between a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. And make sure you know what is being eclipsed and what is blocking the light. Again, if you think about it logically, you can figure it out. And I believe... Oh, and then this is the tides. I might put tide questions on the quiz, but we've already talked about the tides quite a bit. We talked about the tides just a couple weeks ago, but again, since the sun and the moon caused the tides, you'll probably see this question again. But it's just the gravity of the sun and the moon, and it is related to the phases of the moon. When we talked about this before, we hadn't talked about the phases of the moon, so it was a little bit weird. But review your notes. You should know spring tide and neap tide and which phases of the moon they happen in. And uh, that's the stuff we'll do next uh, tomorrow. So make sure you know this stuff as well as being able to draw and label phases of the moon like this. Yeah.